ILS glide slope and localizer deviation, frequency identification, DME, course, and marker beacon indications are provided. The approach reference area displays the selected ILS identifier or frequency, approach front course, and ILS DME distance. If the tuned ILS frequencies disagree, the frequency display turns amber with an amber line through it. On the other hand, if the approach courses in the ILS receivers disagree, the course display turns amber with an amber line through it. The marker beacon indication, OM for outer marker, IM for inner marker, or MM for middle marker, is displayed flashing when over the associated marker. The glide slope scale appears when a valid frequency is tuned. The glide slope pointer appears when the glide slope signal is received. The pointer indicates glide slope relative to the aircraft position. The pointer fills in solid when it's within two and a half dots from the center of the scale. At low radio altitudes with the autopilot or flight director engaged, the scale turns amber and the pointer flashes to indicate excessive glide slope deviation. The current radio altitude is displayed in the bottom center of the attitude indication area when radio altitude is below 2500 feet AGL. The radio altitude display turns amber when below the selected radio altitude minimums. The localizer scale appears when a valid frequency is tuned. The localizer pointer appears when the localizer signal is received. The pointer indicates localizer position relative to the aircraft lateral position. The pointer fills in solid when it's within two and a half dots from the center of the scale. An expanded localizer scale is displayed when the autopilot or flight director is in the localizer mode and the airplane is close to the runway center line. In this situation, a deflection equal to one rectangle equals one half dot deviation. At low radio altitudes with the autopilot or flight director engaged, the localizer scale turns amber and the pointer flashes to indicate excessive localizer deviation. Now similarly, if LNAV is engaged with localizer armed, the scale turns amber and the pointer flashes if the localizer is not captured. Below 2500 feet radio altitude with the localizer pointer in view, a rising runway symbol comes into view to provide lateral guidance. During landing at 200 feet radio altitude, the symbol rises toward the airplane symbol. If the localizer deviation is such that the localizer pointer is flashing, then the stem of the rising runway will also flash. Barometric minimums can be selected for either barometric or radio altitude reference. The minimums reference selector or outer knob is used to select the minimums reference to either radio or barrel. The current minimums reference mode displays just left and above the barometric setting area. When Barrow is selected on the EFIS control panel, the selected barometric approach minimum is indicated on the altitude tape with a triangular pointer and a line. This pointer turns steady amber when descending below Barrow minimums. Additionally, the Barrow and minimums display turn amber and flash for three seconds at this time. When radio minimums are selected, the display shows radio and the selected minimums value, but no pointer is displayed. The radio and minimums display turn amber and flash for three seconds when the aircraft descends through the selected minimum altitude. 
The minimums reset, or inner knob, is pushed to reset the PFD minimums alert display and also blanks the minimums display when it is green. The digital selected head ink is enunciated in the left half of the compass rows. Time critical warnings are displayed in large capital letters between the attitude display and the heading track compass rows. Notice the possible displays for this area. Failure flags are displayed for airplane system failures. Displayed information is removed or replaced by dashes if no valid information is available to the display system because of out-of-range or malfunctioning navigation aids. Displays are removed when a source fails or when no system source information is available. We'll now show some typical PFD configurations for six phases of flight. This first page shows a typical PFD during a takeoff roll. Now we show a typical display for climb. Notice the autopilot is engaged, the airspeed is at the selected command speed, and the speed is far above the flaps up speed. The MCP altitude is set to capture at flight level 310. The current vertical speed is 1,550 feet per minute, and the aircraft is climbing through 11,100 feet. Now we show a cruise at flight level 310. The target speed is 0.82 and the actual airspeed is shown on the tape, and the current Mach value is below the speed tape. The auto throttle is engaged, and you can see the auto throttle roll and pitch AFDS modes. Notice the current heading, selected heading, and current aircraft track. The barometric setting on this frame is standard. This descent display shows the preset barometric setting has been selected, but not engaged. The FMA throttle window has changed to show a typical display after the power has been reduced for the descent. The speed tape shows the target and current airspeeds, and the MCP altitude is set for a 10,000-foot level off. The current descent rate is 2,000 feet per minute. This display is typical for a precision approach. The ILS station ID course, and DME are all displayed in the upper left of the PFD. The localizer and glide slope deviation scales and pointers are now in view. Note the FMA modes displayed here show the engaged modes in green the radio altitude, selected radio altitude minimums, and rising runway are now in view. Notice the speed tape shows deceleration to a target speed of 137 knots, and also a ref value is displayed on the tape. Notice the landing altitude reference bar is in view. The PFD now shows a landing display. The speed tape indicates deceleration. 